what's up? Amelia here. Let's see what's making news. Ex-footy players have joined forces to sue the AFL over the long-term effects of concussions and other head knocks they've experienced on the field. Justina can fill you in. Ooh, ouch. We see our fair share of collisions at the footy. But over time, concussions and head knocks can cause some serious damage to our brains and in some cases can even be fatal. So former Geelong star Max Rook is leading a big lawsuit against the AFL. He says he was concussed up to 30 times in his career and lost consciousness at least twice, which caused some permanent and life-altering injuries, something he says the AFL could have dealt with very differently. More than 60 other former players have said they've had similar experiences and have also joined the lawsuit. It's incredibly difficult to live with these adverse effects. Just hours before it was lodged, the AFL announced a new plan to tackle the problem. It includes $25 million towards a long-term brain health study, more education for community footy and more financial support for injured players. But for now, the ex-AFL players are looking for compensation. It's likely to be close to a billion dollars. And hope the issue that's fast becoming a big headache for the AFL will improve for current and future players. A huge tropical storm has ripped through Malawi and Mozambique in southern Africa for the second time in a month. It's called Cyclone Freddy, and it's one of the strongest storms ever recorded in the Southern Hemisphere. Roads and buildings have been destroyed, and so far, at least 190 people have died. Aussie Sam Kerr has been named the FA Women's Super League Player of the Year at the London Football Awards. It's the second year in a row that Kerr's taken out the top gong following a massive season playing for Chelsea. Overall, she's scored 83 goals in 103 appearances for the club. Huh, pretty good. Students in Adelaide have been learning to play a traditional Ghana game called Pando. Here's Josh to tell us more. The amount of freedom that you have in this game is just really enjoyable. No matter who you are, you always get a chance of getting the ball. They're talking about a game that's landed at their school. This furry sphere is actually the centrepiece of a game called Pando. Pando was originally played by the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains, and now this traditional sport has made its way into the PE course at St Peter's College in Adelaide. We chose Pando because the school we were working with was on Ghana country, and it's important to recognise the cultural connection of the game to country. So how does it work? It's a really simple game, so the main objective is to maintain possession for your team. You can kick it and you can throw it to your other teammates. You can run around with the ball. The boys really enjoy learning about Aboriginal perspectives and ways of knowing. One of these perspectives being introduced is Deconstruct Reconstruct, which allows the group to present suggestions or new rules they'd like to see added to the game. And as you can imagine, this allows for a game of Pando to be pretty customisable. So it's really not like one specific game. I'd encourage more schools to get involved in bringing Aboriginal games into their PE curriculum. My favourite part is probably just hanging out with my friends and, yeah, interacting with new people too. OK, this next segment is going to be the best segment you've ever seen, ever. It has three-headed lions, chocolate that grows on trees and magical elderly ladies. OK, this segment is not as advertised, except for the elderly ladies, actually. Someone in the US has a bone to pick with a fast food chicken chain. They filed a lawsuit over false advertising of boneless chicken wings, saying instead of deboned wings, they were given something closer to chicken nuggets. The company served up some sass on Twitter in response. Visitors to this elephant camp in India expected to see a couple of normal elephants, but instead they got Oscar winners. We came to visit the elephants and then we found out that two of them, Bumi and Ragu, um, won the Oscar. Yup, these cuties feature in Elephant Whisperers, which won Best Documentary Short at this week's Academy Awards. And do you hold a grudge? Is someone getting on your nerves? Why not try this Hong Kong tradition known as villain hitting? People pay elderly ladies to hit an image of their nemesis with a shoe. But there is a catch. It might not work. Well, I know they weren't exactly magical elderly ladies, but it was close. Uh, well, that's all the news for today, but we'll be back with more for you tomorrow. Catch you then.